opponent. And, and it may be that the ability to raise money on the internet has changed the dynamic, but the history is that these are decided long before somebody crosses the delegate threshold. Right. I mean, you have to go right. between Gary Hart in 84 and then Obama Clinton in 2008, right. I believe. Yeah. There's no other race in between that went all the way until someone reached an absolute majority. There just kind of is a general sense in the right. system that somebody's won. I think about in 2008, too, I mean, Huckabee for a while was defiant. He was, I am not going to mm -hmm. get out of this race. Uh, you, you know, he, he uh, didn't go after McCain in South Carolina. Thompson stayed in, it hurt him there. He didn't have the dough to be on the air in Florida. He was, wasn't really a factor there. He had a flicker of life in Super Tuesday because he was really strong uh, in, in his native South in a lot of states. He, he won a lot of states. Uh, and after that, he's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Romney gets out, and the question was, okay, well, Romney's out. Huckabee, you know, when, when are you getting out? I mean, that's how the Republican Party operates. McCain's won. It's his turn. Romney's doing the right thing. Why is Huckabee still in the race? Mm -hmm. And he was dismissed by a lot of folks who really thought the race was basically over when, when Romney got out. But he didn't get out. And he, he was in Texas. I was down there in Texas with him. All the attention was about Hillary and Obama, but he was there in Texas. I remember going to Waco. Uh, home of Baylor University, he had hundreds of people at the Waco Hilton. After he was declared dead by the establishment in Washington, uh, D.C., he was still in the race. But even Huckabee, that night on the Texas primary night when McCain won, even he got out at that point because, again, that's just th that's the nature of momentum. Uh, that's the culture of the party. Uh, it's time to get a winner. It's his turn. You know, there's the door. You going to raise a billion dollars, Larry? Well, I tell you, I think uh, anybody who can project uh, those kind of big numbers with uh, accuracy probably ought to be on Wall Street instead of political consulting. But I, you know, look, I, there's no question President Obama is going to have enough money to to round to, to mount a aggressive race. There's no question the Republicans and the you know the various groups affiliated are going to have the money to have uh, an aggressive race. And, and I, so I, you know, what, whether it's uh, this number or that number, I don't know, but it, it's going to be a well-funded race. Larry's taking resumes right after the panel. <laughs> yes, sir. Anyone that retired from the Republican Party? No. <laughs> I have no idea. Not a lot of enthusiasm there. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Does Romney have a what? Fire in the belly. Fire in the belly issue. Well, uh, but I'm not coming back to that culture in the party. I mean, he had he had won Michigan, but besides that, he hadn't he hadn't gotten uh, I guess Nevada, but it doesn't really count at that point. He hadn't really won anything, and he had just come off Super Tuesday, where he had gotten uh, routed across the country. Um, and he really took some tough hits in the South, too, that sort of proved his difficulty in that region. And I think Romney, at that point, and I'd be curious for Charlie's view, I think Romney said the better part of valor right now is, is to get this big mm -hmm. drop ballot. I have a chance to be on the ticket, and failing that, I have a chance, a pretty good chance in 2012. Yeah, sure. Any objective observer would have told you the race was over. Uh, he just woke up to it sooner than Mike Huckabee did <laughs> and actually got a lot of credit yeah. with McCain supporters and a lot of the other people in the party for getting out when it was time and doing it gracefully. And, and Mitt Romney was so supportive of John McCain, it was unbelievable. Yeah. He did everything we asked him to and more. And, and as did Governor Huckabee, he just took about a month to get around to start. Yes, ma'am. The question is that a growing number of young people like Sarah Palin but don't believe she's credible. Yeah, a credible candidate. What does she do going forward to become a credible candidate? So, so right now, I mean, Sarah, I mean, she came out of election day with uh, on in the exit poll with 60 percent or even 65 percent of the country saying they did not believe she was qualified to be president, and did she not, did not qualified. Not, right. uh, and. That is not easy to undo, as Dan Quayle discovered. He was never able to undo that first week of 1988. I mean, just mm -hmm. the whole rest of his career, you know, the, your mother told you you never get a second chance to make a first impression. So uh, she then faced choices about, you know, how she would position herself and how she would uh, comport herself over the next four years. Uh, 
she by and large has made choices that have expanded her notoriety but not her credibility, right? I mean, she has, she is, um, uh, she has kind of straddled the line between a politician and a celebrity in a way that has given her enormous, uh, you know, has kind of amplified her voice enormously but hasn't done anything to kind of solve that core problem and in fact has, you know, kind of made it worse. Um, she in some ways, I think, is, as Huckabee was in, in 08, she's an identity candidate at this point. Mm -hmm. she's, she, is, right. she is very much like Jesse Jackson in the 80s, where she's kind of an expression of kind of cultural identity more than she is an actual uh, vehicle that large numbers of people think could run the country. So uh, could you make a lot of noise in a Republican primary with that kind of uh, backing? Yes, but there is a really hard ceiling, and I don't know what she does at this point to undo that, and, and, and all the indications are that she kind of wants to go, she has gone consistently in the other direction, you know, uh, kind of further right. toward being a political celebrity rather than kind of a potential president. If you look at who she's taking fights with recently, Kathy Griffin, Michael Moore, members of the mainstream media. Uh, that to me says she wants to be a talk show host or at least a sort of media personality, but here's, here's the issue. We're living in a different time, and I think the sort of bright line between Media personalities and political figures is not the same that it once was, and I think that she's the best exemplar of that. She, she straddles that line. Um, so I think uh, it would be foolhardy to totally dismiss her because of uh, the fact that the rules have changed. And um, part of the party is growing. That's a good and, point. and there's more and more downscale uh, for yeah. folks who are voted Republican. Yeah, right. But I think the premise of your question, though, gets to something of a hobby horse of mine um, that I was really struck by at the Southern Republican Leadership Conference last April in New Orleans. Uh, that I, I picked up in, in, time and time again in talking to voters uh, anecdotally, but you also see it in polls empirically, and that is a lot of conservatives like her and think that she is a great symbol for the party, somebody who gives the liberals hell and tells it like it is. When you go to the next step and you ask them, would you want her to be president? They often pause and they often say, how about vice president? How about RNC chairman? Or they just pause and say, I like her, but the mainstream media has been so mean to her that I think it's going to be hard for her. That to me is shorthand for, for saying that um, you know, we don't see her give, having the keys to the car. We don't want to give her the keys to the car. And keep in mind something else too. The Republican Party is still dominated by white males. Um, guys have a lot of influence in that party. Got guys like her a lot. Um, when, when <laughs> they're laughing because they know what I'm gonna say. When, <laughs> when guys go in the privacy of the ballot booth and they close that curtain, are they gonna vote to make her a commander in chief? That's a big difference. I mean, it really is. Talking about her as somebody who, yeah, I like her giving the liberals hell on TV, but are they going to go into that into that, that voting place in the privacy and pull the lever? And that, to me, I think is an unanswered question. I, if Governor Palin runs, and I, I do not know what she will do, and I don't believe she knows yet. She is a friend of mine. But I, I believe if she runs, she will go out and make serious speeches on policy. She will get into discussions, detailed discussions of policy, not only with the media, but with voters in town hall kinds of formats to show that she knows her stuff and that she's serious. And I think you would see her surround herself with people who had been in government before and were policy experts in different areas. And if she did all that, she could become a serious contender. Whether she does it and, and is a serious contender or not, she will be a major player if she runs. And, and so as we said, her part of the party is getting bigger. Right. You know, the part that likes her. So someone has to fill that lane. Someone ultimately has to be the champion of those voters. But she's also Jackson-like, uh, as Ron uh, smartly mentioned, in the sense of Jackson had a following in the party just like Palin, and privately, a lot of Democrats in 84 and 88 would, would curse Jackson's name, what a pain in the ass. Uh, but you know what, though? Uh, they would never say it in public because they, they didn't want to offend Jackson's supporters. The same way now, you talk to a lot of Republicans privately and they roll their eyes about Palin. They're not going to say it in public because they don't want to offend her supporters, which gets to my point. There's going to be a Palin primary. If she doesn't run, there's going to be, uh, in, in, in the Republican primary, a contest to get in her good graces. So um, I think you're going to see her being something of a kingmaker if she did, isn't in actually in the race because who she gets behind and actually favors um, – could sway some people. Final thoughts, gentlemen? Charlie? As, as a famous man said, I've already told you more than I know. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Whit. <laughs> <laughs> Brand new campaign. We'll see a bunch of new innovative things. It'll be an interesting, uh, interesting session.
I want to hear more about that, actually. <laughs> I see my time to Larry. Go ahead, Larry. Out of time. <laughs> Ron, go ahead. I, I kind of feel like, you know, we've built this enormous transmission system in the media to, you know, examine, cover, and dissect this thing. And there's sort of a demand side demand for activity on the part of the candidates, but I kind of feel like when you have an incumbent president, you're operating within, within a pretty narrow window. I mean, if his approval rating is under 48, it's gonna be very hard for him to win. If it's over 52, it's gonna be very, very hard for the Republicans to win. And if it's somewhere in between, we can spend a billion and a half dollars and have a great time over the next 18 <laughs> months. But, but if we're on either sides of that relatively narrow spectrum, I think it, the result is gonna be very hard to change. Yeah, Scott? Yeah. No, I was Ask Larry, you get the, I, I hope I hope he wants me to come up during Q&A, but if you're looking at <coughs> that, the heartland, that sort of Rust Belt swath where you guys uh, did very well, uh, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, uh, uh, Wisconsin last time around, how do you get those folks back this time around after having a tough 2010? Well, the, I mean, a couple of things. They, I, I don't think that the, the 2010 map is the 2012 sure. map, and I don't think that the way people uh, processed their choices then is is uh, is uh, confining uh, to what we're going to be able to do and, and uh, be able to say. Just as I don't, th I think it would be fair to say on the uh, other side, you know, the, the, the I doubt if the Republicans are going to concede all the places that we did well in in 2008. So uh, having said that, I, I think that it's it's very obvious that that the trouble in the um, in the uh, Rust Belt states is this grinding. Uh, kind of economic situation that is that is that, that people are trying to sort of see where's the path out and where's it um, going and I think there may be places in the country where they are um, where they're kind of seeing a light at the end of the tunnel sooner and I think that that ultimately uh, what the race is going to come down to especially in those places of economic sensitivity is what's the what's the path to the future and what are the alternative choices I don't think um, uh, I I don't think we can speculate a lot on that until you know what the other choice, alternative choice is. Uh, but I think that we know that uh, that uh, President Obama brings some extraordinary equities to that conversation. You know, we should not let Whit get off the stage. Oh, without. Good point. I mean, he's been. Please join me in thanking been, uh, Charlie, <laughs> Larry. Uh, you, you got. You got to. You know. You, 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 you got to give us your, uh, your your quick take on the Republican nomination and your 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 sense of the state of play for the general election. Well, I was hoping you would tell me so I could figure out which candidate to sign <laughs> up with. Yeah. Uh, I, I I'm a complete agreement with you. I think it's as wide open as any race, yeah. certainly in in my professional career. Uh, and at this point, it's just very, very difficult to look into a crystal ball and get any kind of clarity at all. But I think it'll be a fascinating campaign, absolutely fascinating. And my, my sense is that the nominee will be somebody who is now in single digits mm -hmm. in the Republican primary race. I just, I, I don't see any of the people who are leading the polls now going the distance. Somebody's going to catch fire. I just can't figure out which one it's going to be. And what's the dynamic of the general in your mind? Uh, pretty close to what you said. I think it'll be very close. I, I, it's very difficult for me to see President Obama winning North Carolina and, and Virginia again, mm. Indiana putting together the pieces. That There may be other places like Arizona where you, you go to make up the difference, but right now I think it's likely to be a very tight race, at least in the Electoral College, the way, the way we see it right now. Please join me in thanking Charlie, Larry, Jonathan, Ruff for a great panel. Guys, that was great. That was great.